A huge matchup on the diamond takes center stage as two West End teams look to jockey for position as the regular season hits the home stretch. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catter. The Freeman Rebels went into Thursday's game against Deep Run with a seven-game winning streak, which included a road win at Godwin. Meanwhile, the Wildcats were fresh off a doubleheader sweep of Hermitage, and a win would go a long way in keeping Deep Run in the hunt for the regular season title. And one man on the mound, making a big impact early and often. First inning, strikeout swinging for Alec Erickson, still in the first. He's going to get number six to go down, Tyler Brott. Erickson hadn't pitched since the beginning of the year with some arm issues. Uh, dealing with an energy was a, uh, injury, was able to play other positions. Meanwhile, Freeman's offense trying to get going. Tyler Brott at third base, absolutely stone cold robs. Number five, Zach Schwartz, and he is pumped. So some great pitching, some great defense. Back to Erickson. Deep run would have their opportunities early. That was inside for ball four. So two runners on for the Wildcats. A chance to strike first, but Erickson gets some swinging. Scott Sweeney goes down, gets a strikeout to end the inning. We go to the second. Runner on for Freeman at first. Just trying to get him over to the scoring position. That'll work. Ball goes off the catcher's mitt. And now the Rebels, like most good teams do, they get a runner in scoring position. They deliver. That ball's a gapper. Theo Roman going to get all the way to third base in a cloud of dust. And it's an RBI triple. Rebels will take a one to nothing lead. Still in the inning, not finished. That ball is scorched. Same spot. Drew Frank, the DH, he heads to third, but he is out at third base still. Gets an RBI double thrown out at third, two to nothing. Still in the second, bottom part of the frame. Brock down swinging again. Curveball was deep runs nemesis, and Mr. Alec Erickson kept bringing it. Gets a strike out there. Number 34 goes down Drew Larson. Then number 13, Hayes fallen. He goes back to the dugout. Another strikeout. Erickson absolutely dealing, keeping deep runs scoreless. More Erickson, you got it. This time, runner on for Nick Noonan, and what a bunt. That goes for a base hit. So, Noonan getting the job done. Two runners on again for deep run. Another chance for the Wildcats. Erickson once again shuts the door. First five innings, every single final out of the inning, was via the strikeout. Erickson up 2-0 in the fifth. Freeman looking for more. A little insurance. This pitcher right here, number nine for deep run. Yeah, battle of the Niners. David Hansen had himself a pretty good ball game too. But in this scenario, Freeman, runners on first and third. What do you do? You really put the defense in a bind. Send the runner. Throw the second, but gets past the shortstop. And that means a runner from third can come home with a score. Freeman now up three zip through six innings and how about a little defense from the Rebels six four three double play Erickson goes six and two-thirds innings Freeman gets a complete game shutout they win this one at home three to nothing is your final meanwhile on the softball diamond deep run looked like a team with not much to play for they headed into a Friday night contest with rival Mills Godwin with only two wins on the year the last time they faced the Eagles. They were on the losing end of a 14-2 blowout. So the odds of the Wildcats winning at Godwin on senior night were less than remote, right? Well, that's why they play the game. Here we take you to dugout camp for this one. Godwin Lady Eagles say, let's go, deep run. Looking to turn their season around. Can they do it on senior night? Runner on first inning. Wildcats say, yes, we can, especially when the ball gets away. Just trying to get the runner in scoring position on the bunt. They do one better. They're gonna score the runner. And number 16, Hannah White crosses home. One nothing Wildcats still in the first. On the mound, number four, Lauren Murphy in trouble. That's a single. That'll drive home another run. Victoria Slocum scores and she's like, did I do that? Yeah, I did. Number 21, RBI single, Peyton Romer. Two to nothing, bottom one. Looking good on the mound, but a runner on second base gets all the way to third, even though it was a strikeout by Lauren Murphy, but 
Eagles take care of business. They do get the run in. Actually, that's Lauren Murphy crossing over. So it's a two to one ball game, just down one. Murphy back to the dish. Number four versus number four. Hannah Sanella is going to win out on this one. Takes a crazy hop, takes a single, turns it into a double, really. And then Wildcats right back in action. That dog will hunt all the way to the wall. Angela Sparadeo scoring a run with an RBI double, and she was dynamite on the mound as well. Angela Sparadeo, it's three to one. Back to work on the mound. The rise ball, she got all that one. Deep to left. Maddie Myers, that ball will see ya next time. A solo shot for Madeline Myers. And just like that, Goblin Eagles right back in at three to two. We go to the fourth of the seesaw affair. Pitching started to work out pretty well for Mills Godwin. Murphy dealing now, rise ball, gets the top of the zone there for strike three, gets two out in the inning. So Godwin's back up to bat and with a runner on that's going to work as an infield single for maddie myers she's got homer and a single and a couple rbis brand new ball game three three in the fifth bottom part of the frame oh no through the wickets couple runners aboard for godwin later second and third a chance to take the lead the throw home they get the lead runner out on the force out at home and then Ground ball to third. Wildcats get out of the inning without any damage. So it's three to three. Let's go to the seventh. Top half. The road team. That's going to the wall. Hannah Sanella again with the bat, lighting it up with a double. That would lead to this. Wildcats. That's over the head of the right fielder. Allison Yetzi. And Yetzi, she scores a run. It counts. Wildcats all of a sudden have a 4-3 lead, but they were not done. Guttermuth. Maddie Guttermuth, to be exact. One run scores. Here comes another. She'll score. They were down 14-2. Lost 14-2 at home to the same Gawa team. They're up 6-3 in the seventh. They're going to win it, right? Well, not so fast, my friends. RBI. All of a sudden, it's 6 to 4. Godwin still batting in the inning. Looking for another runner. Number 12 sitting there, Amelia Clyde. Ground ball to third. Can they get the out? Yes, but it goes as a sacrifice and an RBI. So now it's 6 to 5. Runner on third base for the homestand and Godwin Eagles. Ground to third. Wildcats get the final out and they get the upset win at Godwin on senior night. 6-5, your final. I, I, I can't even explain it. I'm so like proud. I'm so proud of our team right now. Like everybody pitched in today and it was just a it was just a team effort. Everybody did awesome. We head back to the diamond and stay with senior night when we come back. Highland Springs looks for win number six. Facing Enrico, would the seniors earn their reward? Plus, next winter we'll see some new coaches and guys hoops. One of them will be a very familiar face, especially a Tucker. I'll explain straight ahead. Don't always have time to watch Sportswire on your TV? No problem. Episodes are available anytime on the web at WatchSportswire.com. And it works just as well on your phone. Watch Sportswire anytime, anywhere at WatchSportswire.com. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. Dakar. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking, and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. 
Welcome back to Sportswire. Let's go up tempo. We start with track where the host Highland Spring Springers had a solid night. Keandre Midget had a second place finish in the boys 100 and finished fourth in the 400, while Keontae Midget was second in the 200. The Springers also took four of the top five spots in the 110 hurdles with Justin Malone and James Johnson taking the top two. The ladies won the top four in the 100 and 200 as Alicia Thorpe, Cameron Ross, Gartasia Crawley, and Shanice Smith led the way. Thorpe won both events. As the boys' soccer season hits the home stretch, Tucker continues to earn impressive results. The Tigers got a goal from Pravin Kulal to help Ty Freeman 1-1. Tucker now sits at 6-3-2 and, and still have big matches with Godwin and Deep Run on the horizon. Speaking of Deep Run, the Wildcats won a thrilling finish in Guys Lacrosse, beating Godwin 8-7. With a game knotted at 7, Aiden Wheeler fired one home for the game winner. It was Wheeler's second goal of the game as five other Wildcats scored in the victory. And congratulations to the Henrico Warriors guys tennis team. Henrico finished the regular season undefeated at 15-0. After finishing the season with wins over Atlee, Armstrong, and Highland Springs, they will be the top seed heading into the upcoming playoffs. And finally, both Godwin and Tucker named their new boys basketball head coaches for next season. Godwin introduces Jacob Oliver to lead the Eagles. Oliver had a successful tenure at Meadowbrook, and ironically, it was the Monarchs and Oliver who ended the Eagles' season in regionals this past year, 57-55. Meanwhile, Tucker goes with a guy we used to cover as a player here on Sportswire just 10 years ago. He went on to Randolph making college, where he was all ODAC, which is a conference they play in as a senior. He was the captain of the team as a senior. He participated in the Final Four of Randolph making in 2010. He had 11 threes in a game, which was the most in Randolph Macon basketball history. He's also got more wins in his career than any other player in Randolph Macon basketball history, which would be 93. Rebels all over Tucker, trying to come back. Who else? Adam Desgain! Adam was a graduate of 2008 of Tucker High School. And what I think should comfort every one of you young men sitting out here right now is there's not a question about whether or not he understands what you're going through. Still, this game, creating fadeaway threes good. He had a number of I'm excited to be back at a place that I can call home. Just like Coach Brown said, graduating here in 2008, I'm very passionate um, about the school. We're going to write the new story for Tucker basketball. I truly mean that. So congratulations to the new boys basketball head coach at J.R. Tucker. Adam Desgain takes the reins. He wastes no time. Meeting with his new team and his players right away looking forward to seeing what he can do with Tucker Hoops. Back to baseball now at senior night at Highland Springs. Quite a few seniors making the Springer team pretty special. Already five wins on the year looking for six. On the mound first inning walks were a problem for number 11 Troy Turner. That's one to get on base later. He's at third. This is going to be ground ball. We'll get the out at first. Uh, how many times do you see this happen? The walk ends up coming around the score. one nothing. Henrico, the rivals with the lead. Springers would come back, though, because Henrico was walking people. Maurice Dyer on the mound. That's a walk. That pitch right there. Uh, swing and a miss and a steal of second base for number 22, Austin Snow. It would lead to this. That ball is hit deep to left, and it'll find a home. Run comes around to score, and it's an RBI double by Eric Carter and two runs in scoring position, too. So, Highland Springs takes the lead. That's a seeing eye single. One run scores. Here comes another. He'll score. Highland Springs loving it on senior night, taking the lead and putting up three spot right there. You can see how excited they are. Three to one in the third inning. Later, back to the mound. Ball gets away for a ball. Good stuff from Troy Turner. Just a little erratic. That, speaking of erratic, that, that, ooh, that hurts. Fastball right in the back. Warriors would load the bases and it would lead to this. Down low, ball four. That's going to bring home a run. So instead of it being three to one, it's now a one run ball game at three to two. Still trying to get out of the inning. Dustin Beggs saw him earlier this year to strike out Verina batter after Verina batter. In this case, he's a little wild as well. Now the game tied at three. Base is still loaded. Beggs, you want some defense? What a diving catch! 
saving the day, Troy Turner, because that would have been at least two runs. As there were two outs in the inning, instead, he keeps the damage at a minimum, and it's three to three in the fourth. Springer's trying to get that lead back, right back where it came from. Woo, that's dangerous. The throw to first, almost a terrific play. Instead, Damari Kendall gets the single, and it would lead to this. Troy Turner, I can't make the play, and it was in fair ground. So now two runners on. Springers take advantage. Ground ball to third, it's air mailed to first. One run scores. Here comes another one. Throwing into the dugout, ball did. So all of a sudden, Springers back up 5 3. Later in the inning, it's a gapper. Daniel Dunn, and the Springers aren't done. RBI double for him. Highland Springs jumping on Warrior pitching later in the ball game. Same inning. Ground ball to third. Oh, boy. That ball is airmailed again. Runner is it safe at first and really savvy base running by Daniel Dunn. He gets it done. Springers get that extra run. It would be paramount. 7-3 to three in the fifth. Back to the mound. Henrico says we aren't going away without a fight because that ball is good for the out at first, but there was a runner at third. So seven to three is now seven to four. Highland Springs trying to get out of it. That ball gets away from the catcher. Here comes a runner. He is safe in the plate. Now it's seven to five. Still batting in the inning. Number 11, CNI single Matthew Headley. Seven to six. It's an RBI single for Headley. Warriors on the comeback trail. Seven to six through six. We go to the seventh. Last chance for Henrico, just one run down. Ground ball up the middle, gonna be a tough play. But he makes the final out. Springers go home happy on senior night. Getting the final win, seven to six is your five. We hit the courts when we come back. Freeman fills up the scoring on senior night as the Lady Rebels take on Tucker. Plus, Glenn Allen runs into a Lee Davis squad who was on fire on the softball diamond. All that and more. Coming up. Now for another two-minute history report. We all know about the blockbuster, World War II, the famous attacks, the military heroes. But what do you know about the prequel, the First World War? At the time, they didn't call it World War I. No one ever imagined there'd be another. It was known as the Great War, or the War to End All Wars. In the early 20th century, Europe had a bit of a different look. There were the Fab Four empires, ruled by monarchs who maintained a delicate balance of power. Then in the summer of 1914, a group of assassins attempted to blow up Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand while he was touring Bosnia. The attempt failed, but later in the day, an assassin's bullet prevailed. In retaliation, the Austro-Hungarian Empire declared war on Serbia. Russia immediately came to Serbia's support, which motivated Germany to declare war on Russia. Before long, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Great Britain were involved. Jolly good! Everyone polarized into two groups, the Allied Powers and the Central Powers. New technologies dominated this world conflict. Tanks, machine guns, and airplanes changed the way armies battled. Trenches and tunnels became the new strategy, although that led to soggy problems. The British and German navies dominated the seas. Then in May of 1915, Germany sank the Lusitania, killing 128 Americans. President Woodrow Wilson demanded Germany change her tactics. I demand it. Huh? Germany appeared to comply, but later offered to finance Mexico in a war against the U.S. So the United States joined the war. Oops. A year later, on August 8th, the Allied forces began the Hundred Days Offensive. This series of assaults forced the German forces back and eventually led to the war's conclusion. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month, a ceasefire went into effect. Then came the Treaty of Versailles and the formation of the League of Nations. This war changed the landscape of Europe. Monarchs were out, the four great empires were gone, and new countries emerged. So here it is in a nutshell. Europe used to be led by the Big Four until a bullet made Franz no more. Conflicts arose, triggering numerous hawks, Success meant machine guns, tanks, and dry socks. The ceasefire became a celebrated day, although the next war was just a few years away. That was World War One in two minutes. Welcome back to Sports Wire to Adams Elementary we go, where these guys are getting ready for testing. SOLs, hats, you name it. 
And they would have a special guest on hand at a pep rally, getting them ready, fired up for the testing period. And how do you fire up kids for a test? How about bring NBA star, former Springer, Andre Ingram? The truth is, everyone misses a shot in basketball. LeBron James does, Stephen Curry does, Andre Ingram does. Everybody misses shots. Let me ask you this, raise your hand if you think after I missed the shot, I just gave up, I just stopped. Very good, very good. After every time I missed a shot, I kept playing. After every time I made a turnover, did something wrong on the court, I kept playing. Raise your hand if when you get to a tough question, you're gonna stop and quit because it's too tough, it's too tough. Raise your hand. Very good. This time I want you guys to be loud. Again, it's one, two, three, keep that flag. Four, five, six. All right, let's do it louder. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Over 25 years ago, you know, it's crazy. I was in here, the same PE teacher. And it's the same school, looks exactly like I remember it. I, I enjoy coming back. My kids go here, so it, it always brings back some sort of feeling. First when my kids started coming back here, and uh, yeah, just, just great to be back here. Uh, where it all started, it really started here. That basketball court outside for recess is where all of this happened. Great time by all had uh, over there at Adams, and uh, great, great move by Andre Ingram. To girls tennis, a girl you just saw there, Emmy Levinson. Wanted to get her in action. She's one of the top players, but it's senior day, so that means seniors, like the girl in the backcourt right here, were getting the shot. That shot is wide. Lucy Collins getting the start at the number one, taking on Tucker. Now Collins in the foreground here, in the front, running up to the net. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. She's taking on Palick, and uh, she was in control later. Lucy Collins on the serve. A little back and forth there. Oops! Trying to get a little slice. Missed that one. Looks good for the goose. Good for the gander, though. Gonna happen the other way this time. Collins. Oh! Swing and a miss. Foul tip strike. Point Palitz, but it was too much. Lucy Collins, she wins 8-1. We go to the number twos. It's Alexandra Smith in the far court. Taking on a player who had a game plan for Tucker. She's tall, go to the net. Fortune, Fortune smiled on the aggressive net play. Here comes Fortune again. Slam a jam, are gonna try to get me by again? No, not gonna get past the net. Nice point right there for Fortune. Then Fortune on the serve. Why not try it again, get to the net. Use your size to your strength. She had a game plan, I like it. Gets the point once again, but Smith would Wise up, check it out, just coming to the net this time. I'm gonna lob it right here. Can't get to that one. Again, Fortune and she gets a win, eight to one. So Alexandra Smith, the ones and twos for Freeman wins. How about number three? It is Davis versus Yoon and Davis. Lucy Davis with a nice shot right there. Yoon on the serve for Tucker. That shot just goes wide. And then here's a nice well-played rally between the two. As Davis looking to win each game here. First one to eight takes it in this scenario. Nice overhand top spin. And that unforced air gives her the point and she gets the win. Davis beats Yoon 8-0. We skipped the number fours because they were already finished by the time I got there. So let's go to the fives. And that would be Katie Goodman. We saw on the far court getting a nice uh, winner there. Taking on Miller. That is a winner winner. Chicken dinner. She gets the point. And most importantly, she wins the match. Eight zip. And Freeman gets the shutout. 9 nothing. your final. Freeman is your winner. To the softball diamond we go now where Glenn Allen has had an excellent year by any standard. Problem is they ran into a team that is 
absolutely phenomenal and has been for years, and that's the Lee Davis Lady Confederates. Early on, a base hit and an RBI. Lee Davis would take an early 2-0 lead there in the first. You saw Sidney Guest taking advantage of the pitch, and then later, uh, what a play in center, just can't make the catch. So, so close, McKenna Melbrecht gets to be the beneficiary of being safe. Later, they throw to first to get the out, back the third, no. Important part, runner scored. So, run comes home three to nothing in a second. Let's go to the third, or make that the fourth. Cannot quite corral it, another base runner, Madison McLaughlin on for the C-Feds, and they would take advantage of that. That is the boomstick, and that ball will see you next time. A two-run shot for Sydney Guess. She wasn't guessing on that, but she was waiting for it. Five nothing. The lead at this point, and great stop at short. Just airmailed the throw. Uh, Lee Davis, just the hotter team at this point. Uh, I got a good feeling Glenn Allen's going to see them again. They were not going to be denied a run, though, however. Uh, they get the walk by Ashley Haley, later runner at third. Haley will come around the score. At that point, that would make it 6-1. to one. It was just too much Lee Davis there. Offense more than Emmy Aiken could handle, and Emmy Aiken's been a heck of a pitcher all year round. Too much Lee Davis in this one, however. They win this one going away. 10-1 to one is your fun. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see you next time on Sportswire.